It was over three years since Jesus called some fishermen to be his first disciples here on the Sea of Galilee. And now a group of these men returned to these same shores. Among them were Simon Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel, the sons of Zebedee, James and John. After all these men had witnessed in the life of Jesus and after all they had experienced with his death and resurrection, they did the obvious thing that guys do. They broke out the fishing gear. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, we will go with you. They went out, got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just as day was breaking, Jesus stood on the shore, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, do you have any fish? They answered him, no. He said to them, cast the net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it in, and now they were not able to haul it in because of the quantity of fish. John 21, three through six. The account goes on to tell us that John cried, it's the Lord. Peter's response was to jump out of the boat and swim to the shore to meet Jesus. The other disciples followed behind in the boat, dragging a net full of fish. When they got to the shore, Jesus had a wood fire ready for the fish and was even baking bread. I just love this scene. Men bound by pure brotherhood, pure friendship. Now you might've even picked up on something else here. This final scene in the Gospel of John takes us back to the beginning of Jesus' ministry in this area. Recall some of the first words Jesus spoke to Simon Peter. Put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing, but at your word I will let down the nets. And when he had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish and their nets were breaking. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. And when they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. Luke 5, 4 through 11. So it appears that this is why Jesus wanted his disciples to return here to the Sea of Galilee. This is where everything tied together. And then after breakfast, Jesus looked at Simon Peter and said this, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, feed my lambs. And he said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, tend my sheep. And he said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter was grieved because he said to him a third time, do you love me? And he said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. And he said to him, feed my sheep. And then, just as a few years earlier, Jesus ended by saying, follow me. What a remarkable exchange. Jesus questioned Peter's love for him three times. And each time, Peter responded, yes, I love you. And each time, Jesus, the, the good shepherd, followed Peter's response with the command, feed my sheep. It appears that if Peter truly loved Jesus, his Lord, his Messiah, 
that he was to give up everything to care for those who would later be the followers of Jesus. I don't think it was lost on Peter that Jesus asked him, do you love me three times, just as Peter had denied Jesus three times. It's likely that Jesus did this by design. It allowed Peter to redeem the past while emphasizing the importance of Peter's role going forward. Welcome to House of Joy. So glad you guys are here with us today. We celebrate this beautiful day that God has blessed us with. And it is beautiful. It says in Psalms 149, praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song, his praise in the assembly of the godly. Let Israel be glad in his maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing, make, ma making melody to him with tambourine and lyre. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He adorns the humble with salvation. Let the godly exalt in glory. Let them sing for joy on their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their throats and two-edged sword in their hands. It is good to praise the Lord. It is good to rejoice in his goodness today. And you know, I just rejoice so much. Um, out there are some beautiful, beautiful moms who, who deserve just today to be set apart and say thank you. Thank you for, first of all, for choosing to bring forth life into this world. Thank you for your care and your nurture. Thank you for, for just watching over those, those children and raising them. There's nothing like having a mom who loves you and a child. That's the very first, I think, picture of love that they see is, is the love of their mom and their dad. So I just rejoice and I say happy Mother's Day to all you beautiful moms out there. You deserve this day of blessing, but you know what? You deserve that day every single day. May you feel honored and loved by your family. Most importantly, may you understand how much God loves you and is there for you. I, I thank um, and all the, the times that of raising my kids, I'm like, I could not have done it without God's help. How many times I went in the bathroom and I was like, Jesus, help me. I don't know what to do. And I love the fact that when we are as moms, when we start out, that God is with us and he gives us his word to counsel us, but also to guide and lead us. And so I rejoice over you today and may you just be blessed and enjoy this day that God's given you. I just want to welcome you to House of Joy. We have a lot of things that happen throughout the week. Just a, a moment just to make you aware of some things. On Tuesday at 7 o'clock, we have our services online, our prayer service. And please come in and join. There's nothing like the power of prayer. It's in prayer that things shake and things move. It's in prayer where we encounter. We come into the presence of God. He says, draw near to me, and I will draw near to you. It's that, it's that encounter that we have with God. And as we lift up our requests and our needs and we lift up our country and we lift up what's happening and we lift up so many things, he hears us. I love the word that says he hears the cry of the righteous and he answers and his arm is there for us. So come and enjoy us and, and join in with prayer on Tuesday at 7. On Wednesday, we have a study. Pastor David's doing a study on the, the book of Revelation. At 6 o'clock is the English, and 7 o'clock is the Spanish, and you want to be aware of what is happening now. So please come and join us on Wednesday online on um, both Facebook Live and also our YouTube channel. And on Fridays, we have so many things happening. Something new I'm excited to tell you about, too. But first of all, let me tell you what's already happening on Fridays Live. We have our youth service that starts at 6 o'clock. And it's just a fun, exciting time that's done in English. At 7 o'clock, we have a Spanish Bible study that um, is just every, every week. There's just revelation pouring forth in both. And, and, and every time, I think that God's word is just opened up. There's revelation that's coming through the power of his Holy Spirit. Something I, I'm so excited about also to announce you on Fridays, starting this coming Friday. We will be releasing a video for our children. There's going to be a children's video um, specifically geared, teaching specifically geared towards children. Also at the same time, along with that, will be a devotion that you can, that you can find both on Facebook 
um, live and also on our webpage that you can take and throughout the week you can sit there and you can do a family devotion with your kids based on the teaching that comes on Friday. So Friday morning, that will be released. Please look for it. Please sit down with your kids, enjoy it, and um, may it be a blessing to you. And then again, um, also on Sundays, um, our service at 9.30 on English and following will be a Spanish service at 11. We rejoice to have you be with us and um, may you be blessed. All right. And uh, are we ready? Are we ready this morning, you know, just to celebrate, you know, to start the, celebrating the mothers? You know, I know, you know, all of you are with your mom today, and you remember, it's Mother's Day, so mom doesn't cook today, okay? There is a strike going on today in the kitchen, so you better figure out what you're going to do for mom, you know? Uh, you can start just by praying for her. You can start, you know, by uh, cooking, you know, a, you know, a breakfast, doing something for her, and then, you know, getting everything ready for lunch, all right? And just uh, treat her good today, you know, and every single day you, we are to honor our parents, you know, our fathers and mothers, okay? So today we celebrate mothers, so happy Mother's Day, all right? And uh, yeah, we're going to start today with, uh, we have a lot, uh, you know, uh, to cover, you know, and I am so excited today because we have a... Uh, uh, um, I was, I was writing the message, you know, this, uh, this week, and, and, and believe me, it was, it was so, it was so, so great, you know, it was so, I was so uh, moved, and I was so into it, I was so excited, but at the same time, it was a really hard message to write, you know, to, to get, and, and uh, normally, you know, on Thursday, I'm already done, you know, but uh, yesterday, you know, I was still struggling with something. But I know when we struggle with something, it's because God has something really, really great for us. Okay, so, you know, so I, I'm just excited about that. But, you know, I want to start today just by uh, taking, you know, a few minutes, a couple of minutes, you know, on prayer. Okay, a few minutes on prayer. So if you can join me. And uh, Pastor Becky is going to join us too, you know. And I'm going to go ahead and start us over here. And then, and then we, and we're going to go back and forth, you know, right here. Okay, Heavenly Father, we come before you, Father, and I thank you, Father, for this beautiful day, Father. I thank you, Father, for the honor, Father, for the privilege, Father, to be able to celebrate this day, Father, you, Father, to celebrate you, to celebrate the God of heaven, to celebrate the God of the universe, the maker, the maker of all. Father, to celebrate you, Father, to celebrate your love, Father, to celebrate that Jesus, Father, is still alive, that he is alive and he's reigning forever and ever. Father, to celebrate your love, Father, that you gave Jesus for us. Father, thank you, Father, because through Jesus we get salvation. Father, thank you, Father, because everything, Father, is, is, is point, pointing us out, Father, to spend eternity with you, Father, forever and ever, Father, just uh, uh, being happy with you, Father, and being, Father, f full, Father, of all those things, Father, sometimes we miss. And, Father, thank you, Father, because this is the day that you have made, and we rejoice. We, Father, we take a decision. We're going to rejoice and be glad on this day. Father, thank you for mothers, Father. Thank you, Father, for moms. Thank you, Father, because moms, Father, are the, are the greatest experience expression, Father, of your love over here on earth, on earth, Father. Thank you, Father, because it's the moms, Father, the ones, Father, who sacrificed everything and, and, and anything, Father, for us, Father, to see us happy, to see us, Father, doing good, Father, to see, on, to see us doing great. Father, thank you, Father, for the counseling of our mothers, Father. Thank you, Father, for, the, for having them there, Father, right next to us, Father, through, through our life, Father. Father, thank you, Father, because today we celebrate that wonderful being, Father, our moms, Father, and we thank you for them. We are so grateful to you. We come to you, Father, with an attitude of gratitude, Father, for them. And Father, and I don't get tired, Father, just saying thank you. Thank you for moms. Thank you for my mom. Thank you for my mom because, uh, Father, you have given her such a large life, Father. Thank you, Father, because she's already 94 years old and she's stronger than Father than, than ever, Father. And thank you. Thank you, Father, for giving her health, Father, to, Father, to, for sustaining her, Father. Father, thank you, Father, for giving her the, the strong heart, Father. And thank you, Father, for giving her, Father, a strong faith. Father, thank you, Father, for who she is. Thank you, Father, for every single mom, Father, who are directing, Father, their kids, Father, on the, on the ways of the Lord. Father, thank you, Father, because they are the ones most of the time who take on, Father, the task, Father, the task, Father, of, of training us, Father, on the ways of the Lord. Father, thank you, Father, for the greater example, Father, that 
those moms father, are for us, those Christian moms, father, those moms who have a relationship with you, father, those moms who have a relationship with Jesus Christ, those moms who know what the presence of the Holy Spirit is, and father, and they apply it father, through, through, father, through the whole the, the task, father, through the whole process, Father, of growing us, Father, bringing us, Father, to become, Father, the men and women of God that you want us to be. So, Father, today we bless them. We bless every single man, Father, who is right now, Father, right there, Father, just being uh, uh, taken care, Father, by, by their sons and daughters, Father. I thank you, Father, for the, for, the, uh, for, for the privilege, Father, for the honor, Father, of having a person, Father, we can call man, Father, because on that name of man, we find, Father, the, the greatest love that we can find on this world, Father, that can, even, can only compare to your love, Father. Thank you, Father, because you made them a special beings for us, Father. And Father, you give them a special heart, Father, for us to put up with everything that we do, Father, good, thing, good, bad, and ugly. Father, they always see us, Father, as, the, Father, as their, 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 their kids, Father, their child. And Father, right now, Father, we just celebrate them, Father, and we thank you. We thank you, Father, and we come before you, Father, with the, Father, with thanksgiving on our heart, Father, we come to you, Father, with praise, with worship on our heart, Father, from inside of us. Father, thank you, Father, because we can just let it burst out, Father, all that joy, Father, all that happiness that is inside of us, all that gratefulness that is inside of us, Father, we can just let it burst, Father, and with words, Father, and just elevate, Father, a praise and worship to you, Father. That is better, Father, than any song. That is better, Father, than any instrument, Father, because this is a fresh song that is coming out from the bottom, Father, of our heart, Father, from the, our inside, Father, and it's just go, Father, to you, Father. And Father, I, I, I ask you, Father, and I, I hope, Father, every single prayer that is made, Father, right now, Father, on every single church and every single home, Father, it, it is just a, a, it's a great fragment to you, Father, and you can receive it, Father, and you can receive it, Father, and right now, Father, we just ask you, Father, just to sit down on your, on your, on your uh, lazy boy, because I know you got a lazy boy where you just sit down and you, you just relax and receive all the honor, all the blessing, all the worship, all the praising of your kids, Father, today. Father, we love you. We love you, O Lord. We love you, Father, and we give you thanks. Heavenly, yes, Father. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Father yes, God, Father. because your ways are perfect, your ways are just, and your ways are pure, and your ways are holy, Lord God. And Father, I thank you today, because your word promises that you never leave us nor forsake us, but God, you guide us, Lord God, and you lead us, and you direct us. Lord God, I thank you, Father, before we woke up even, Lord, Father, it says that you pray for us, Lord God, that your thoughts are towards us, more numerous than the grains of sand are your thoughts towards us, Lord. I thank you, Father God, because we are never, Father God, alone. Own, Lord God, but Father, you guide us and lead us through the power of your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father God, for wisdom and revelation that comes as we study and we apply ourselves to study into your word, Lord, and through your Holy Spirit, you show us things to come and you remind us of, of, of what we have learned in the scriptures. You, you talk to us about Jesus. You comfort us, Lord God. I thank you, Father, that for that gift, that precious gift of the Holy Spirit. I thank you today because this is a good day to rejoice. You say to rejoice in all things, Lord God, and we rejoice. No matter the circumstances, we rejoice. We lift up our voice unto you and we say we are grateful and we are thankful and we rejoice because God is still God and you're still king and you're still on the throne. And I thank you that you're moving and even though we don't understand God, things are being shaken as we pray and lift up, Lord, that you're, you are going out throughout the earth, Lord. And Father God, you are moving on behalf of your people. I thank Thank you, Lord, when you look, Father, when your eyes roam and you look to and fro for those who are of faith that, Father, it stops here, Lord, on us. Father, I thank you as we lift up our trust and our faith in you, Father, that we come into this place of abandoned surrender to you, Father, knowing that you're perfect, knowing that, that you have it, knowing that you're good, and that we can trust you, Lord. We just thank you and give you praise. I thank you, Father, for our families, Lord. I just lift up especially, Lord, our children this week. Father, as they are coming into the last part of their schooling for the year online, and it's been tough and it's been different, but God, I thank you that you have been faithful to them. Father, I thank you that you empower and strengthen them. I thank you for this time that they have with their moms and dads. 
Lord. It is a different time, but it's a time for families to reconnect to one another. And I thank you for that time that you have given us, Lord. Father, just to stop and reset some of our priorities and reset some of our things because in the midst of all this, it's the people that we love that are so important. It's it's the mission of Christ to get out in the world and, and to reach people and reach souls that is so important. And sometimes we get so busy and things that have no weight and no importance, and we let go of the things that are so valuable. So I thank you, God, that in this season, while we don't understand things that are going on, and in some places, Father God, there is struggle, I thank you that you're faithful to us. And I thank you in this moment, because sometimes in those places of uncertainty, that's when we look up, and we cry out, and it causes us to just go deeper. So thank you, Father God, that in this time, Lord God, Father, that you have given us, Lord, that you're calling us to a deepness in you, Father, and, and Father, that our hearts are open and we respond to that, that we seek your face as a deer pants after living water, that we pant after the living God, that, Father, we desire you, that when we wake up in the morning, our thoughts are towards you. Lord, give us, Lord, uh, an awareness of the season that you've placed us in. And we rejoice in that, Father. I rejoice in that. And I also thank you, Lord, for a godly mom. Father, a godly heritage. Father, I thank you for people in my past that I don't even have memory of, but I know they prayed. And I know they sought for generations to come and that I'm here as a result of those prayers. But I thank you so much for a godly mom who has prayed for me every day of her life because I walk in the blessing of that. And Father, I pray for that for the children that are out there. And Father, if they're growing up in a home where their mom doesn't know Jesus, that today, Lord, is their day. Today is their day of salvation and that you just reach them and let them know how valuable they are. Sometimes as women, Lord, we struggle with that, with value and worth, but I thank you that when we come to you, that you are the one who calls us worth because of Jesus that you look at us and we are your favorite children because of Jesus, that you look at us and you call us loved because you love. And I thank you, Father, for that. May, Father God, every woman that's out there, Lord, that has children, Lord, and that you give them strength in their inner man through the power of your Holy Spirit to accomplish the greatest work that they've been privileged to be given which is to raise this next generation for you. And I, get, I ask, Lord God, you just intervene, Father God, especially in their life, Father, and strengthen them for the calling, because it is a calling of God upon their life. Father, and I give you praise for that in Jesus' name. And Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father, for this special time, Father, we're going through, Father. We thank you, Father, because on everything there is a purpose, Father, from you, Father, to us, Father. Father, thank you, Father, because there is a purpose, Father. There is a, uh, something, Father, you're teaching us, Father, during this time, Father, of trial, Father, during this time, Father, of stress for many people, Father, but not for us, Father, because we have the chance, Father, we have got the opportunity, Father, to take, to take time, Father, to be with our families, Father, with our kids, and Father, and just to teach them, Father, the, the ways of the Lord, Father, and thank you, Father, because because it's a time, Father, where we, Father, become, Father, the models, Father, for them, Father, the raw model, models, Father, for them, Father, to follow. Father, thank you, Father, and I ask you, Father, right now, just to give us, Father, your knowledge, your, your wisdom, Father, to be able to grow those kids, Father, in your ways, Father, to teach them, Father, the love of, the, the, the love of God, Father, to teach them, Father, that you are a merciful God, Father, to teach them, Father, that it's not you, Father, the one who sends all of these things, Father, but it's the, it's the man trying to control man, Father, the one, Father, what is going on right now, Father, and right now, Father, I thank you, Father, because overall, Father, you, your presence, Father, is still with us, Father. Your Holy Spirit is still guiding us. Your Holy Spirit is still, Father, taking care, Father, of each of us, Father. I thank you, Father, because still, Father, you're supplying all of our needs, Father, according to your riches and glory. And, Father, we don't, we don't fear, Father. We don't fear, Father, because we know who we have put our trust in, Father. We know, Father, that Jesus Christ is more than able, Father, to do whatever, Father, is needed, Father, to exceedingly, Father, more beyond, Father, whatever we can imagine or ask, Father, or think, Father, he, he already done it, Father. He's already done it, Father. And we just have to receive it. We just have to learn to receive it. We just have to learn, Father, to materialize all those uh, blessings, Father, you have gave us, Father. You, Father, we understand, Father, because the, the, in the book of Ephesians, Father, you told us, Father, uh, the, Paul, Father, talked to us and he said, Father, that thankful. We, we are thankful. We have to th be thankful to the Father of our Lord Jesus who has given us everything, all the, all the blessings, the spiritual blessings, Father, right there for each of us. Father, from the beginning of 
the world. Father, everything is done, Father. We only think we have to do first. We have to learn how to receive it. Father, in Jesus' name, Father, I ask you right now, Father, just to pay, Father, a, a, a special visitation, Father, to every home, Father, that they have a relationship with you, Father, and to make them understand, Father, to bring in their hearts, Father, the, 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 the confidence, Father, that you are, Father, right there with them, Father, and nothing is going to go wrong, Father. Everything is going to be fine, Father, for those who love you. Father, you, that's what your word tells us, Father. Everything, Father, that will happen, Father, for those who love you, Father, it will come, Father, it will comply, Father, with the purpose that you have for us. And Father, right now, in Jesus' name, Father, we declare, Father, we are more than conquerors, Father, because of him who saved us, Father. We are more than conquerors, Father, because Jesus overcome, Father, death, overcome, Father, evil, overcome, Father, the, uh, hell, Father, overcome the tomb, Father, over there on that, on that cross of Calvary. Father, we thank you, Father, because Jesus didn't stay there, but he was, uh, he rose again, Father, and he lives and reigns forever and ever, Father, and that's the blessed hope we have, Father, that one day, one day, Father, we're going to be with him, Father, eternity, but eternity, Father, doesn't start, Father, when we close our eyes, when we give you our last breath, Father, but it's, Father, when we open our hearts and we invite Jesus Christ into our heart, that's where eternity means, Father, we can start, Father, enjoying, Father, the benefits of eternity, Father, even here, Father, even here on earth, Father, so I ask you, Father, to give us the wisdom, Father, so we can understand, Father, what that means. Father, thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, Father, I take every spirit of fear, Father, and I bind it, Father, and I take it out from, from every single uh, spirit, uh, Christian home, Father, there's no reason for us to be in fear. Father, right now, Father, the, what we, we come to you, Father, believing, Father, believing you, Father, believing your word, believing Jesus, believing the Holy Spirit, believing, Father, that your presence is with us, Father, wherever and whenever, Father, whatever place we go, Father, that, that you are there with us, Father. Thank you, Father, because your word, Father, is true. Father, thank you, Father, because we can trust your word, because we have our confidence, Father, on, the, on your word. And Father, thank you. Thank you, Father, because you are not a man to lie, Father, or son of man, Father, to go back on your word, Father. But everything you said is coming, Father. It's coming true, Father. Right now, I thank you for every single word, Father, that is on the, on the Bible, Father, on the word of God, Father, because I know, Father, all of that is going to come true, Father, especially, Father, in our lives. And Father, thank you. Thank you, Father, because you are great, Father, and greatly to be praised. Father, we worship you. Father, we worship you. We praise you, Father, and we lift up our hands to you, Father. We lift up our hearts to you, Father. And we come to you, Father, with a humble, with a humble heart, Father. We come to you, Father, with a contrite heart, Father. And Father, if we have fell to you, Father, we have sinned against you, Father. Father, we right now, Father, we come to you, Father, with a repentant heart, and we say, forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, Father. Father, don't take, Father, our sins, Father, in account, Father, because Jesus already paid for them, Father, over on the cross, Father. By the blood of Jesus, Father, we, our sins have been forgiven, Father. By the blood of Jesus, Father, we have been covered, Father. By the blood of Jesus, we have been bought, Father, back to you, Father. By the blood of Jesus, Father, we are, Father, we can live lives, Father, that are holy before you, Father, and we thank you. We thank you, Father, because you are our God. Father, we thank you, Father, because you are not only our God, but you are our Father. And Father, we come before you, Father, and we just thank you, and we just humble before you, and we say, Father, Father, your will may be done, Father. Father, your kingdom come, Father. Your will be done over here on earth, Father. Not because you're going to come down and do it, but because you're going to put the desire on our hearts, Father, to, to, get the, to embrace, Father, your kingdom, Father, to embrace your will, Father, and to bring it over here at the, at the, to earth, Father. Father, thank you, Father, because we are more than conquerors, Father, because you, because Jesus Christ is in our heart. And Father, and we love you. And Father, and I ask you, Father, today, Father, through the word, I ask you, Father, through that message, Father, you have put on my heart, Father, to bless us, Father, beyond, Father, anything we can imagine. Father, I ask you right now, Father, for any spirit, Father, of doubt, Father, any spirit uh, of, uh, of whatever, Father, that might come, Father, and be an obstacle, Father, for us to receive, to get, Father, what you have for us today. Father, we bind it, Father, and we send it to the feet of Christ, and we declare, Father, that, the, Father, that every single home, Father, that, that you know, so one of the person who is on that home, Father, is a, a son of a daughter of God. Father, I, I decree, Father, right now, and I declare, Father, that that house, Father, is protected. It's protected by the blood of the Lamb. And, Father, and nothing is going to come against them, Father, but they're going to see the testimony, Father, of you, Father, upon that person, Father, who believes on you in that house, and the whole home, Father, is going to know that there is a Jesus, Father, who saves, that is a Jesus, Father, who, Father, who, who, who heals, Father, and that is a Jesus that is coming soon, and Father, we humble before you, and as a church, Father, we humble before you, Father. And I thank you, Father, for every single person you have put, Father, on this congregation. I thank you for every single person who is under the sound of my voice right now. 
And I glorify your name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This is a wonderful week. Um, you know, and, and, and uh, for everything, for everything what's going on. You know, we have to learn to be grateful to God on everything, okay? On everything, you know. When, on the midst of everything, we have to know the presence of our God is there. We have to know Jesus Christ, you know, is there with us. He's alive. We have to know the Holy Spirit is there, you know, to counsel us, okay? To teach us, to guide us, to protect us. Okay, to fill us with his presence, with his anointing. And I thank you. I thank all of the brothers and sisters, you know, of this congregation of House of Joy, you know, who's still being faithful, you know, to, with the responsibility that they have with the Lord, you know, for, uh, by bringing, you know, their, their tithes and offering into the church, into, the, into this place, so we can continue preaching, so we can continue bringing the Word of God. Thank you, because yes, we still have to pay for the light, we still have to pay for the internet, we still have to do everything. We own this building. God gave us this building, you know, for us to be able to rejoice, to bo- for us to be able to bring the Word out, you know, and what a precious gift that has been, and now it's our, it's, it's our responsibility, it's our duty to keep up with everything that's going on, you know, on, on this building, it doesn't matter if, you, if we are uh, uh, right now working or we are not working. It doesn't matter if we are on a regular life or not. It doesn't matter if we have uh, a service inside the church or outside. You know, we still have to come, you know, and, and be responsible with him, we ha- with what he has given us. So um, I thank you for sending, you know, your, your help. I thank you for sending, you know, your, your tithes and offerings. And, you know, the address is right there. The address, you know, is a, is a house of joy, 4241 Pepper Drive, Rockford, Illinois, okay, 61114, okay, and you can send it on, uh, via, via mail, you know, or you can uh, bring it yourself. You know, some people have asked me, Pastor, why don't, why don't we have an elect- electronic way to do it so people can do it right there while you're watching? You know what? I, uh, this is me. I am really old school, and you can ask my wife, you can ask everybody who works with me. You know, I am really old school on some things, and this one is one of them. It has to cost you. It, ha- it has to, you have to do something for it. If we have the services over here in the church, you know, the congregation, you're going to see, we don't go with a plate, you know, it's the, you know, share by share, you know, asking, begging you to put something on it. No, no. You know, we put the plate over here, okay, we take the, 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 the basket, okay, and we always put it over here on front, and we ask you to stand up, you know, walk all the way to the front, and bring your tithes, bring your offerings, and put them over here, because it has to cost you something. It's not just writing a check and sending it out, it's, you know, and, and do whatever, you know, electronic thing, No. You know, make it, you know, go to the post office, send it, or come over here personally, and we're going to pray with you, we're going to bless you, you know, and we're going to do the things right. So that's the reason why I prefer this way. I don't know, you know, it's a, a, it, it might be an old school, it might be, you know, whatever you want to call it, but, you know, but I think there is a special blessing when, when it costs you, when you do something for that, you know, the... In one occasion, you know, uh, David, the psalmist, you know, he was looking for a place, you know, to build uh, the, a house for the Lord. You know, and he went to a place, you know, where, where they had big, a lot of land. This guy had a lot of land or whatever. And he went and see, and, and see him and told him, I'm looking for a land to do this and this. And the guy said, well, I give it to you for free. You don't have to pay me nothing. And you know what David said? He said, I will not do anything for the Lord or give anything for the Lord, you know, that didn't cost me nothing. So it has to cost you, okay? And, 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 that's, and, and there's a special thing when you walk with that tithe on your hands, you know, just, you're praying to God. You're bringing that offering, you know, and you're praying and you're saying, Father, I am being faithful to you. I am being obedient to you. And you know what? There is a special blessing that is upon you when you do that. God will open the gates of heaven, and he will pour out blessing on you like you never believe, okay? And, and, and you're never going to lack of anything, okay? So I'm going to pray right now, 
And I'm asking you just to bow your, your head right now, you know, and, and do the normal thing you do at the time you do when we are together, all together. Okay, fill out that check, you know, and then put them on an envelope, and then tomorrow, you know, walk to the post office, drop it, or stop by the office, by, by our office, you know, from Tuesday through Saturday, and we will be happy to pray with you and for you. Heavenly Father, we come before you right now, Father, and I thank you. I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity we have always, Father, to be part of what you're doing, Father, on this earth. Father, because by giving, Father, our tithes, by bringing our tithes and offerings, Father, we are being part with you, Father, of what you're doing on this earth. Father, we might never probably be able to go to another country to preach, to take the word. Father, but what we do makes possible for some people, Father, to be, Father, to go to different places, Father, even in this country, Father, even the, uh, on the next uh, neighborhood, Father, whatever, Father, go to overseas, Father, whatever, Father, and bring the gospel. And Father, people are going to be being saved, Father, they're going to receive the message, but it's not only because the person who's going to preach, it's because a lot of people made that possible for that person to go. So, Father, we become partners with you, Father. In this endeavor, Father, of saving souls. So, Father, put on our hearts the revelation that the, it is, Father, and, and being part and partnering with you, Father, for the kingdom. Father, in Jesus' name, Father, I ask you for a special blessing, Father, for those, Father, who are being obedient, Father, to your word. And, Father, to understand, Father, that you said, Father, if we bring the, tithe, the whole tithe, Father, and offerings to the altar, Father, you will to the house, Father, you will. You will, Father, rebuke the enemy. You will rebuke, Father, the destroyer, so it doesn't destroy, Father, the work of our hands. And, Father, you will multiply, Father, whatever we have, whatever we do, Father, is going to be blessed. And the people, Father, of the world are going to know us as a blessed nation, as a blessed people. Father, I thank you. Father, and I ask you, Father, to supply all of the, the needs, Father, of the people who are under the sound of my voice right now, Father. Father, we know, Father, you supply all our needs according to your riches and glory in Jesus Christ. Father, we want to be faithful to you. We want to be faithful to your calling. And Father, thank you. And we love you. And we ask all of these things in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. All right. Time to go fishing. Who wants to go with me fishing? Huh? You see, I am prepared. You know, I even have my uh, uh, cane over here, you know, fishing, fishing rod, you know, with the reel and everything. So I'm ready. Okay, are you ready to go fishing today? All right. So, you know, uh, uh, like I said at the beginning, you know, I am so excited uh, with this message. Because it's something, you know, that the Lord has put on our hearts, you know, since uh, 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 the beginning of the week, you know, and, uh, but he has been perfecting it to the point, you know, that uh, yesterday I was, uh, I was just uh, writing, but I was, uh, uh, on the good English, cracking up. <laughs> Myself, you know, I was, I was just uh, laughing, you know, and smiling because of what, I was, what the Lord was giving me at that moment, you know, to share with you today. Because before, you know, we bring the word, it has to do something in our hearts. You know, as a preacher, you know, I am not only the delivery boy. I am the person who is uh, transformed by the word of God, and it has to do the work in me first before it goes to you. So, you know, so I, I used to say, you know, I am the delivery boy. No, I am not the delivery boy. I am a... I, a, a, I am a, a an instrument, an instrument on the hands of God, you know, but before that word goes out, you know, it has to do something in me first so it can be a blessing for all of us. So, and this is very simple. The title of the message, you know, is uh, Let's Go Fishing. Let's go fishing. That's what God has called us to do, you know. If you are going to catch what God has for you, if you are going to became, become, you know, what God has purpose for you to be, okay, you are going to uh, have to go through uh, a divine process, I call. A divine process of a spiritual uh, preparation. In, in other words, you know, we're going to have to follow God's direction. In other words, we're going to have to follow, listen and follow to God's instruction to our lives. So I want you to go with me just to read the whole thing at once, and then we're going to disclose it. 
I want you to go with me to the book of John, chapter 21, verses 1 through 7. John, chapter 21, verses 1 through 7 says, After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and in, his, and in this way he showed himself. Simon Peter, Thomas, called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter says to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, to him, we are going with you also. They went out and immediately not into, uh, went into, got into the boat. And that night they caught nothing. But when the morning had come, Jesus stood up on the shore. Yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said to them, children. Have you any food? They answered him, No! And he said to them, Cast the net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast, and now they were not able to draw it in because of the multitude of fish. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, He needs the Lord! Now when Simon Peter heard it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he had removed it, and plunged into the sea. Then, you know, John 21, 14 says, This is now the third time Jesus showed himself to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. Wow. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word, Father. And I thank you, Father, for the power of your Holy Spirit, Father. And I thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit, Father, on me, Father, today. Speak to our hearts, Father. Holy Spirit, speak to our hearts. And help us to understand the spiritual truth that you want us to learn today. In Jesus' name, amen. So, in John 21, 3, the verse 3, it's very simple. Simon Peter says to them, I'm going fishing. You know, there was something going on. There was something going on. They were together, and they, maybe they were get, waiting for Jesus to appear again. Maybe they were kind of bored. You know, and, and you know how we get sometimes when we don't do nothing. Maybe they were getting kind of bored, and then... Uh, Peter said, you know what? I'm going fishing. And the other guys, you know, they looks like they didn't have much to do either. And they said, hey, wait, wait up. Wait up. We're going with you. Peter said, I'm going fishing. You know what? We are creatures that have been given the ability, you know, to make uh, decisions based on choices. And not based on reactions or impulse of our instincts. And because of this ability... When we finally figure out what's what we want, then we set out to achieve that, what we desire. But oftentimes, I don't know about you, but oftentimes, you know, no matter what, how hard we, uh, how, how hard we try, all we find are obstacles, skepticism, doubts, discouragement, and disappointment. However, we must realize that these are all essential moments, essential moments in our lives. And without them, our purpose will be empty and it will be insufficient. So everything that goes on our, heart, on, on, on our walk, you know, with the Lord is going to help us. It says all what happened, you know, is, everything what happened, you know, is going to help us to become the person that God wants us to become. We must understand that in order for us to achieve that what, we, that what we want or what we purpose in our lives, there is obstacles. But these obstacles are not hindrance or determined, but they are in fact a, a part of the process to bring us to, the, to, to get those desires, those results that we are looking for. Tell somebody, tell somebody who is with you right now, tell them, hey, I'm going fishing. I'm going fishing. <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter. It 
It doesn't matter, you know, if you, if you are a fishing master. It doesn't matter if you have never gone on a fishing trip like me. Okay, but it doesn't matter if you are trying to uh, catch a, ba- a bass, you know, a catfish, or you're trying to go to that, for that, you know, big marlin or whatever, marlin, whatever is uh, the name. <laughs> I'm not even familiar with the man- names of some of them. You know, before, but before you are able to catch a fish, there is a process that you must first go through. And it doesn't matter how good you think you are, if you don't go through the process, you will never catch that fish. And you're never going to be able to tell fish stories like me. I will never be able to tell, you know, a fish story because I never fish. That doesn't mean I never will. Unless you go through the process, you will never catch the fish. And that's so important for us to understand it today. It's so important for us to understand the process. You must first have a, a, you know, it it is a process. It is a process you have to go, you know, through, you know, in in order, you know, to be able to catch that fish, in order to become what God wants you to become, in order, you know, for that purpose to become a reality on your life. You must first, you know, have a rod. You know, I have a rod over here. Okay, it is a process. If you're going to fish for something, it is a process you have to follow. You got to have a, a, you know, a, you know, a, a, how do you call it? A rod. <laughs> you have to have a, you know, a, in, a, at the end, you know, you have to have the reel. You have to have, you know, the, 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 how do you call it? The wire, okay, that you need. And you're going to have to have something to get the, the, the attention of the, of the fish. You know, in this case, you know, I put the potato chip. I don't know if that will catch anything. But, you know, you, you got to put something there. But there's a process. There's a preparation you have to go through. I have never been, you know, at a deep uh, sea fishing. But I know that in order... In order for you to catch different types of, uh, of fish, you got to have different types of baits. It changes depending on what you are going for. And after you have the rod, after you have the reel, after you have the proper bait on it, you're going to have to cast the, 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 the wire, you know, on the, on, the, on, on the water. Otherwise, you're not going to get it. You're not going to get nothing. Tell somebody, I'm going fishing today. So, all of this, the rod, the reel, the string, the bait, all of this, you know, is just in preparation for you to catch a fish. This is the process that you must go through in order to catch a fish. But let me tell you, life in general is also a process. Your life is, is a process. My life is a process. You have to. You have to go to school, you know, to get an education that will allow you to make a, a, a decent amount of money so you can live the life that you are wanting to live. It is a process. It is a process you got to go through to bring us to the point that, that we can enjoy life as it is. What I'm trying to say, church, is uh, that everything in life is a process. A process is a, it's a, it's the steps of, of uh, gradual changes in our lives. A process, you know, is a series of uh, actions and steps that will bring you to a complete result, the result that you are looking for. It is the same way on the spiritual. In order for you to catch what God has for you, in order for you to become what God has purposed you to be, you must go through a divine process, a process of spiritual preparation. In other words, you must follow the instruction that God gives you. Because you must become prepared to handle what God is trying to get to you. What God is trying to bless you with. It's a process. You know, the Word of God says, repent. Accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Invite him into your heart. Be baptized in water. In the name of the Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of the Holy Spirit. 
so you can receive that salvation, so you can be saved, and so you can have eternal life with God. It is a process. What I'm trying to, to say, church, is we have to submit to the process, the spiritual process it is, to take communion. There is a process even to take communion. You know, we take communion in the first or second week of the, of the month, every, every month. But, you know, even to take communion is a process. Paul says, you know, we have to make sure before we come to the table, we have to make sure there is no sin in our lives. So, and if there is sin in our life, then we have to correct that. How? You cannot correct anything. You have to come to Jesus and, and say, you know, with an open heart, you know, with a, with, with a humble heart, with a repentant heart, and ask him for forgiveness of your sins. And then you can come to the table and have communion. Because if you have communion without being clean, be, with, with a pure heart, then you can bring damnation into your soul, into your, into your life. It is a process. A boxer. A boxer doesn't just get jumped into a ring and start fighting, you know, tra and, and expecting, you know, to win the fight. No. He has to go through a process. He has to run miles. He has to weight, you know, heavy, heavy weights. He has to lift heavy weights. You know, he has to run. He has to uh, uh, exercise. He has to practice his best punches so he can win the, the, the fight. It is a process. Let's tell somebody, I got to go fishing. Oftentimes, let me tell you this. Oftentimes, God wants to give you a gallon of blessings, but there you are, you know, with a teacup trying to, to, to hold, sustain the blessing that God wants to give you, and yes, you get some, but most of it, you know, gets all over because, because you, don't, you were not prepared, because you didn't do your homework in order to receive the full blessing of God. It's not enough, you know, just to get a, a teacup. You know, even when I am at my home, you know, and I want to drink coffee, I drink more than a teacup. But, you know, but this is what, what we do spiritually. We want to receive the full blessing of God, and God has a, a whole gallon of blessing or five gallons of blessing or whatever it is, a barrel, a drum. You know, but then you stand there, you know, with a teacup trying to get all the blessing of God. And you missed it. Yes, you enjoy some. Yes, you receive some. But you miss The biggest part of it. Why? Just because you are not willing to commit to the process. Tell somebody, I'm going fishing today. You know, in the book of John, chapter 21, verse 1. Chapter 21, verse 1. It says, this is not the third time Jesus, Jesus showed himself to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. This was the third time. This was the third time. And I want you to pay attention to that, to everything today, because numbers are going to make a big difference for you and for me to understand what God is trying to put in our hearts today. This was the third time that Jesus you know, showed himself you know, to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. This is after the resurrection of Jesus. Jesus Christ had already appeared to them once, and we read about that, you know, a couple of weeks ago. You know, in the book of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 22 says, Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, the same day at evening. Why is saying the same day that evening? Because it is the same day that Jesus was, you know, he rose from the dead. It was the same day there was a woman right there, you know, looking for Jesus, Maria Magdalene. And, 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 and you know, an angel said, okay, why are you looking the one who lives over here among the dead or whatever, you know? It was Mary Magdalene, the one who Jesus said, okay, go and tell the boys that I am alive. That I, am, I, I, am, I came back from the dead. Go and tell them I am alive. I have to do something, but tell them I will come and visit them. You know, and Mary Magdalene, he went to the board. The boys were, they were locked up. They were in fear because they were, you know, afraid of the uh, Jewish people, of the Roman people to come, the Roman soldiers to come and kill them. They were afraid. 
But Mary comes and tells them, Hey guys, the Lord has risen. There's no need for you to be in fear anymore. He has risen. You know, last week we were talking about Thomas. And we always blame Thomas because we said, well, Thomas is the one who is always doubting. Doubting Thomas. Unbelieving Thomas. Why? Because he requested to see something for him to believe. But what do you think it happened to all of those guys? Mary came early in the morning after she found out Jesus was, uh, was not dead, that he was alive. She came, you know, to where the boys were, and she told them, she gave them a testimony. I saw the Lord. And what did they do? Did they say, okay, let us go with you so because we, go, we want to make sure that is, you know, that, that is true or whatever. No, they stayed there. They stayed there. They didn't believe the testimony she gave them. That's why it says the same day. What the same day? The same day Jesus was resurrected. The same day, they, you know, Mary Magdalene came, you know, and gave them testimony. The same day, they stayed there. They didn't do nothing. So it was not only Thomas, the one who had to see to believe. It said the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the youth. Fear, even after they knew Jesus was already alive. Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be with you. Verse 20. When he has said this, and pay attention to that. When he has said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And then you see a period. Because even though Jesus, you know, came and he stood in the midst of them, they were still doubting. They were still doubting. He said, the peace, my peace be with you. And verse 20 said, when he has said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Period. And then it says, then. Say with me. Then. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. But it, was, it wasn't until he showed them, you know, the, the holes of the nails. It wasn't until he showed them, you know, the, 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 his side. Then they were glad that they saw the Lord. So Jesus said to them again, peace to you. And I love that. You know, I told you, you know, I was, I was so excited as I was reading, the, writing this, you know, because I didn't see these things. You can read the Word of God a hundred times, and every time you read it, God is going to reveal something to you of the Word of God, of His Word. You know, because it says over here, verse 21, So Jesus said to them again, Peace with, be with you. Why? Because they didn't receive it the first time because they didn't believe that was him until he shoved them their, his hands, until he shoved them their, their, uh, his, his side. Then they believed. Now they were ready to receive the peace that he was offering them. It is not until you have a real encounter with, the, with Jesus Christ when you are able to receive the peace that surpasses all understanding. Many people are in fear right now. Many people are shut on their houses right now. Many people are afraid to do anything. You know why? I wonder if it's because we still don't believe. I don't know. So Jesus, Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he has said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Ghost. 
So, you know, at that moment, when they realized that was really Jesus, the one who was in their midst, and after they saw their hand, his hands and his side, then is when they believed. And then Jesus commissions them. And he said, just as my father sent, sent me, I am sending you. And we know they still didn't do nothing. We know they still stood there locked up for fear. How do we know that? Because eight days later, the Bible says, when Thomas was there, the one we said who was the unbelieving Thomas, that was the most honest guy I, can, I ever met. At least he had the guts to say what, what was on his heart. At least he had the guts to come before God and tell him, Lord, I believe, but help me on my own belief. Because that's what happened to many of us. We believe, but we need to come face to face with God and say, God, I believe in you. I believe in Jesus, but help us in our own belief. Because deep inside, there's still something that needs to be settled. And until you settle it, you're not going to see the full blessing of God on your life. Say with me, I'm going fishing. <laughs> Thomas was not with them the first time. Then Jesus appears a second time. And I want to tell you something. Numbers have meanings. And the number two means division. Numbers two means dividing the old from the new. The old from the new. That's why, you know, it's necessary for us to be born what? Again, or to be born twice. Why? Because the first time we were born, we were born death, spiritually dead. So we have to come into the realization that we need Jesus in our life if we want to receive eternal life. So we have to be born again. We have to be born a second time. Why? Because number two is the number of division. It separates the old from the new. Five, <laughs> 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if anyone is in Jesus, it's a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. That's why you have to be born twice. It says over here, on John 20.26 20, And after eight days, his disciples were again inside, again inside, meaning they were still afraid. Even after Jesus said, you know, peace be with you, as the Father sends me, I send you. And he breathed on them and they received the Holy Spirit. They still were in fear. And after eight days, his disciples were again inside. They were not supposed to be there. They were supposed to already doing something with what Jesus has given them. Verse 22. I mean, verse 26, right? And after eight days, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, the doors being shut, so you can see the fear right there, right? The doors being shut and stood in the midst of them and said, peace to you. Wow. You have to understand this happened eight days after. Did you got that, right? Remember, <laughs> there is a divine process. And there is a divine order why God does things the way he does it. Why wasn't seven days later? Why wasn't six days later? Why wasn't nine days later? Have you ever thought about that? 
It said eight days. And after eight days, why? Because the number eight means a new beginning. Number eight means new beginning. So after the second time, after, you know, their nature was divided, where, you know, the old was gone and the new has come because he, they had the Holy Spirit, now they were ready, eight days later, for a new beginning. Eight is the number of a new beginning. And Jesus was about to give them a new beginning that day. Go with me to John 21, 2, the, second, the next verse. And yes, I was telling Pastor Becky, you know, I was intending, you know, for this message to be one message. But then, you know, at 8 at night, last night, it was so much that God was giving me. So I understood this has to be, this has to be a series of messages. So we're going to be fishing for a while. I hope you learn to fish. Let's go fishing. John 21, 2. Simon Peter, Thomas, called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, it was two of them, and two other disciples were together. How many? Peter, Thomas, the sons of Zebedee, two of them. Nathaniel, and two other disciples, seven. Seven disciples were there at that day. And what the number seven is, you all know what seven is, right? Seven is the perfect number of God. Seven is the number of God. God, was, Jesus was about to do something with these guys. You know, they had the number two, it's divided, their old nature, for, with the, and given the new nature now, okay? Eight days later, you know, Jesus giving them a new beginning, and you know what? There were seven of them, and seven is the perfect number of God. You know, seven is the number is repeated in the Bible more than any number. Why? Because it's the number of God. This is perfect number. <laughs> so we see we have seven disciples. But with Jesus, there was eight. <laughs> A new beginning. Are you getting this? When Jesus is in your life, you have a new beginning. When you are born the second time, the old nature is thrown out of the window, and here you receive a new nature, nature, the nature of God in you through Jesus Christ. So that had happened already. There was seven there, there, the perfect number, with Jesus eight, ready for a new beginning. Say with me, I'm going fishing. <laughs> wow. Church, the reality of this is we have to understand, we must understand that God always operates in a divine order. There is an order that God, God always operates, that God always works. We are familiar with the mentioning of Peter, James, and John, and the Bible. The Bible very often talks about Peter, James, and John. Jesus took Peter, James, and John to the Mount of Transfiguration. Jesus transfigured himself in front of before Peter. James and John. Later on, when Jesus was called, you know, because the uh, Jairus, you know, one of the centurions, you know, his daughter has died. Who did Jesus took with him? Who did Jesus took, you know, to Jairus' daughters? 
resurrection. He took Peter, James, and John. Do you think that is by chance? No way. God always operates on a divine order. Why is it that at the beginning were how many? Pastor Becky, 70? Why is it that at the beginning was 70 disciples? And then Jesus picks 12 of them. But from those 12, wherever Jesus was going, Peter, James, and John were with him. Yeah, a lot of people think it's because they were the favorites, Jesus' favorites, they will say. Oh, some pastor, you know, said, well, because they were the, the three amigos. Jesus loved them more than the rest. Well, I don't think so. Because the last time I read the Bible said, God doesn't make respect of a person. So there's got to be something more to it, right? Have you catch anything? <laughs> I lost my bait. <sighs> Most of the time, you know, we come out with, I don't know where we get it from. But we say, you know, those three is because they were the closest friends to Jesus. Those three were because of this, because of that. But the reason we do that is because we fail to understand the divine order of God for them to be, for those three guys to be always with Jesus. There's got to be an order. There's got to be something that God is trying to tell us. There's, there's got to be something this represents for us. There's a process. There is a purpose on everything that God does. But sometimes we fail to understand the divine order of God. You know, I was praying. And then God took me you know, to some of the places where Peter was. And Peter represents faith for us. Peter represents faith for us. Why is Peter, James, and John? First, we're going to start with Peter. Peter represents faith. We often talk, you know, about Peter as, uh, as the guy, you know, who sank when he was walking on water. But I never saw any of the other guys doing the same thing. It took faith for Peter to get out of the boat and walk on water. It took faith. Other people say, yeah, but Peter was too impulsive. He denied three times Jesus. Yeah. He denied three, Jesus, three times Jesus, but that was a man of faith. Before Jesus went back to the Father, he said, Peter, Peter, before, before he went to the cross, Satan has requested you to shake you off. And I have prayed that your faith does not fail. Even Jesus knew the great faith this man had. Peter represents for us faith. When Jesus asked, whom do men say that I am? Some of the disciples said he was the reincarnation. People said you are the reincarnation of, uh, of John the Baptist. Some of them said you are the reincarnation of uh, Isaiah, Elijah, or one of the major prophets. Why? Because they didn't want to say nothing that will get the people mad because there was a lot of scribes and Pharisees around them and they didn't want to make them mad. So they were saying what was popular. But Peter, he didn't care if he was going against the current. He never cared. He was not popular with the rest. He will always speak his mind, believing what he was saying. Whatever was on his heart, you know, he believed it. And he stood up and he said, Lord, you are the Messiah. You are the one that our Father sent. You are the Son of the living God. It took faith for him to go against what was popular. It took faith for him to go against the, 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 
the current. So Peter represents faith. He got to the point where Jesus said to Peter, Peter, no blood of flesh revealed this to you but the Holy Spirit. It was God who revealed this to you by, the, by His Spirit. And upon this rock, upon this rock, upon the confession you have made, I'm going to build my church. Jesus is the rock. Where church is founded, the solid rock. The Bible says in Hebrews 11.1, 1, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You know what? Some time ago, a, couple, a few years ago, I was going to say a couple, but it's been more like eight years now. I was asked to teach a class, you know, on faith. And I was talking about this, and I said, okay, the book of Hebrews 11, 1 says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And I like that description, but it still didn't give me what I needed to believe when I was looking for something. I like this description of faith. Faith is a standing at the break of darkness, and you don't know if the next step you take will throw you off a cliff or not. <laughs> That's what faith is. Faith is a standing at the break of darkness and you don't know if the next step you gave or you take, it will throw you off on a cliff or not. Faith is believing that at the precise moment, God will give you something solid for you to stand or he will give you the ability to fly. How do you like that one? Faith is believing that at the precise moment, God will give you something solid to stand on or he will give you the ability to fly. That's what faith is. Faith is recognizing our limitations, but releases us to walk into the unlimited resources of God. So Peter represents faith because he realized his, his limitations. You know, when he was on the boat, he said, Lord, if that is you, say the word, and I will come. So he recognized his limitations. He knew if he stepped out of the, of, of the boat, you know, in his flesh, in the flesh, he would just sink. So he said, Lord, I know I cannot do it on my own, but I'm relying on you. Say the word, and I will walk out of this boat. And remember what Jesus did? He only said, come. And that was enough. That was enough for Peter. That was enough. As soon as the Lord said, come. Excuse me, boys. And he started walking. But he was not working on water. He was walking on, on the word that Jesus gave him. That's why he said, Lord, Say the word, and I will walk on that word. I don't care what is on, on, you know, underneath me. I don't care what is underneath, but I'm going to walk on that word. Say the word. And Jesus said, okay, here it goes. Here it goes. Are you ready? One, two, three, come. <laughs> and that was enough for Peter. Do you see why Peter represents faith for us? James and John. James and John. They were brothers. They were the sons of Zebedee. 
whenever you read of them in the Bible, it always mentions both of them together. You never read about just John or just James. Even when it talks, even when the Bible talks about their death, when they die, it mentions both of them, both of them together. Can I tell you a secret? Because I don't know many people know this. We read the Bible. We do a lot of things. We study the Bible. But sometimes there is details that escapes our mind. Now, I better not say it now. I will say it later. Ah, what the heck. We will we'll say it. <laughs> do you know that James and John, they were cousins of Jesus? They were Jesus' cousins. <laughs> Their mother was Salome. I think that's the, how, you men, how, you call, how you pronounce it. And if not, just figure it out. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you a revelation. Their mother, Salome, was Maria's, Jesus' mother's sister. <laughs> Jim and John's, James and John's, you know, they were brothers. They were the sons of Sivity. They were always together. They were always together. We never read about just John or James. They were, even when they die, they're together. They, the Bible mentions them together. The reason they are mentioned together most of the time is because of what they represent. Do you got that? Say, I am going fishing. The reason why they are mentioned together is, most of the time, is because of what they represent. In the Bible, there is two things that always go together. You have one because of the other. And that is goodness and mercy. Goodness and mercy always follows that who believe. Do you see? Do you see now why is Peter, James, and John? John represents, I mean, Peter represents faith. But James and John represents goodness. And mercy. Goodness and mercy, they will always follow the one who believes. Wherever faith goes, goodness and mercy of our Lord follows them. Remember Psalms 23? Psalms 23 is not on my notes, so you're going to have to search it on the Bible. It's between, the book of Psalms is between Genesis and Revelation. But the Psalms 23, and we always read that, you know, I don't know why, but we always read that Psalm, you know, when people are, are deaf. Why will the dead person need to hear the Psalms 23? Psalms 23 is for you, it's for me. So we can know the mercy, the goodness and mercy of our Lord. Our Lord. You know, Psalms 23 says, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, like we are going right now with this virus, get over it. Get over it. <laughs> yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they come for me. Verse 5. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. And look at verse 6 now. Surely. Say it with me. I want to hear you. Come on, type it over there. You know, type it. You're, you're digitally. Okay, I can hear you. Just do, use your fingers. 
Say with me, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. <laughs> That's why you hear so much about Peter. That's why you hear much about Peter, James, and John. Because faith, because goodness and mercy will, also fo will always follow faith. Goodness and mercy of the Lord will always follow those who believe. Because to be with Jesus, you need faith. To receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you need, to, you need to believe. You need faith. And once you believe, now once you put your faith in action, then goodness and mercy will follow it. Wow. Tell somebody, I got one. Tell somebody, I got one. <laughs> Oops. Let me drink a little bit of coffee. You know life is better with coffee, right? Wow. Wow. The goodness and mercy of our Lord will automatically Follow those who believe all the days of their lives. Though you walk through a valley of shadow and death, you should be, you should have no fear. You should not fear. I think that is a good reminder for us today on these days. Wow. When Jairus' daughter died, Jesus did not allow nobody but Peter, James, and John. Why? Why when, when, it, when Jesus was going to do one of the greatest miracles, he was going to bring that girl, you know, from the dead back to life, why did he allow nobody else but James, but Peter, James, and John? Because Jesus was about to do the greatest miracle, one of, one of the greatest miracles. But it's one, it was going to take great faith on the part of Jairus and his wife. And because of their faith, they were going to receive the goodness and mercy of our Lord. Woo! So that's why we read so much about Peter. James and John, because of what they represent for us. And that's what God has for you today. His goodness and mercy are ready to follow you if you only believe. So if you have never made Jesus Lord of your, of your life, Lord, Lord and Savior of your life, you know you need to do it today. Because if you believe, then the goodness and mercy of our Lord is going to follow you every single day of your life. And there's no coronavirus, there's no virus at all that's going to be able to come over you. Why? Because you have the antivirus, which is the blood of Jesus that is on you. That is the blood of Jesus he shed over there on the cross for you. That you know, and by the stripes of Jesus, we were we we were healed. So you even if you get it, you can claim healing because by the stripes of him we were healed. Did anybody catch something today? Wow. So if you have never made Jesus Lord of your life, I want to make that prayer before I close with you. Bow your head with me right now and say, Heavenly Father, right now I come before you with a humble heart, with a repentant heart of a life of sin. But I know I can receive forgiveness because of what Jesus did on the cross. So Jesus, I open my heart as an act of my own will. Based on the facts I just received and I know they are truth. 
I open my heart to you and I invite you to be my Lord and to be my Savior. I believe you. I believe your word. Come into my heart. Holy Spirit, make of my heart your dwelling place from this day forward. And I know, I know now, because I believe that goodness and the mercy of my Lord is going to follow me all the days of my life. And I have no reason to be afraid no more. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer, you belong. You belong to the family of God. The number two just happened on you. It divided the old nature, and now you have a new nature. You have been born again. So we have established that there were seven disciples on that boat that day. We know seven is the number of God, the perfect number of God. We learned that seven represents a spiritual completeness and a spiritual perfection. We also learned that seven plus one, Jesus Christ, is eight. And that represents a new beginning for you. Because when you receive Jesus Christ on your heart, you receive a new beginning. So we know that seven... We know that. We know there were seven disciples on that place that day. And they are about to enter a divine process. A divine, a spiritual process of completeness and perfection. Because now Jesus is directing them and Jesus is guiding them. I have a question for you. Do you want to continue fishing? I'll see you next Sunday at 9.30. And we're going to continue fishing for the truth and purpose of God for our lives. Can you bow your head? Heavenly Father, I thank you, Father, this morning, Father, for your word. I thank you because your word is truth to our lives. I thank you, Father, for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit here with us today and every day of our lives. Help us to remember who we are. And help us to remember, because we believe your goodness and your mercy will always follow us. And there's no need for us to be in fear. We ask and say all of these things in the wonderful name of Jesus, to whom we give all honor, worship, and praise. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. And share the message with somebody else. Thank you.